Hey everybody, this is Klaus from Plant Based News. So it's amazing how many documentaries there are out there about the plant based lifestyle. And in this video, we count down the most epic seven, as well as provide a little bit of a sneak preview about a couple of documentaries that are in the works and about to come out. Let me know down below what your favorites are, and I hope you enjoy. So let's start with Educated, which has a kind of student feel to it. It follows Marissa Wolfson as she recruits six cheese-loving, meat-eating New Yorkers to try a vegan diet for six weeks. They say you are what you eat. I love kosher hot dogs with all the trimmings. Philly cheese steak. <laughs> and these three people are about to find out who they are. Meat lasagna. Mm -hmm. More meat. Some cream cheese. It's a rack of lamb. This much meat. <laughs> and what they're made of. I think there should be any concern of us making this documentary. Of course. If you don't realize right now that you're putting your neck on the chopping block, you know, <clears throat> you, you better take that camera and throw it away. Don't worry, we'll play the rest of the trailer in a minute, but I remember when Cowspiracy came out in 2014 and then Leonardo DiCaprio came on board in 2015 as executive producer and brought it to Netflix. And I remember it giving the plant-based and vegan movement so much mainstream appeal that it didn't have before. It's an environmental disaster that's being ignored by the very people who should be championing. Let's look at the fundamental problem here. No one wants to talk about it. Because they're, they're membership organizations, you know, a lot of them. They're looking to maximize the number of people making contributions. The leading cause of environmental degradation is... Um, we uh, need to address that as well. It's not up to the Department of Water Resources. Hard to actually target, like, one thing. I, I don't necessarily know what it is. There's suppression and mismanagement of information you know, everywhere it abounds. It starts at the local level, but then it goes all the way to Congress. When you consider the devastation it's having on our planet as well as the oceans. And we're in the middle of the largest mass extinction of species in 65 million years. And they can dictate the federal policies because they have so much political power. They're one of the largest industries on the planet with the biggest environmental impact trying to keep us in the dark about how it's operating. That's the one thing no one talks about. You know, everybody goes around that. Unfortunately, we are no longer able to fund your film project. We had a meeting, and due to the growing controversial subject matter, we have some concerns that we have to pull out. You're going up against people that have massive legal resources, and you have nothing. A lot of people just keep their mouth shut because they don't want to they don't want to be the next one with the bullet to their head. I don't know that I would want to comment on that. Made by the son of Dr. T. Colin Campbell of China study fame, this documentary talks about the health benefits of a plant-based diet. It blends real life stories of key scientific information. Check out the trailer. What's your healthiest meal? What? What's, do you have any health meals, anything that's fresh? No, we don't. The culture in America is that everything revolves around food and unhealthy food. The healthcare cost trajectory is out of control because the consumers are not in charge. This is clearly an unsustainable trend. We're not telling people how to use food. Red meat, Beef. cream beans with bacon and butter. When we talk about this idea of plant-based nutrition. It's a powerful concept, and it's one that my father is associated with. Dr. Colin Campbell, doc. Whole foods, plants-based diet. Right. You don't mean the store. No. <laughs> I went on essentially a plant-based diet. No dairy, no meat. Type 2 diabetes, heart disease, hypertension. <laughs> Gone. Physicians don't know how to prescribe a diet. We've been taught how to write prescriptions. Right now, this information isn't available to them. So how can they make a decision? We're working our way into the political process here. 
The absence of meat as part of your diet is not the best direction for all Kentuckians. you got to realize that there's a lot of big money interest. But the amendment itself is flat out true. We're trying to demonstrate this concept in this community. We offered 10 days of food. I've been testing for 26 years, and I've never seen results like this. Mr. Speaker, I call for a vote. The folks that are challenging this, they represent big business. Well, the truth is a stubborn thing. And it doesn't go away. The documentary, Plant Pure Nation, explores scientific evidence. In any movement, the first step is always the hardest. Your total cholesterol is 150. Is that accurate? Yep. When people learn about this, the very next question they ask, why haven't I heard this before? Why? Because revolutions can't start without awareness. Back when I started in this, there were three farmers markets, now there's about 26. The amount of money that we spend to create the kind of health situation we have, it's not working. This is gonna be a lifestyle. Our thesis is that we've gotta change this world from the bottom up. You can see what the person is eating by looking at the plaque in their arteries. So many of my family members ended up dying of heart disease and cancer. We cut people open, we bypass their clogged arteries, you tell them they were cured, and more often than not, they would go home and do all the things that had caused the problem in the first place. I believe our body was made a certain way to run on a certain fuel, and we have been putting the wrong fuel in our body. We, we become addicted to it, and the addiction that occurs is very similar to the addiction that occurs with nicotine. I had the perception that I was a victim, that it was in my genes. I had a stroke, I had to live with that. I was diabetic, I had to live with that. And I had a basket of pills, I had to live with that. People that are eating a standard American diet don't understand the scientific implications of that in their body. A lot of the illnesses that I was treating uh, were being brought on by lifestyle, in particular dietary habits. In medical school, there was very little training in nutrition. Our doctors are not getting this in medical school. And if they're not, then you're not getting it. There has to be a paradigm shift in our medical education. Foods are the cause of diabetes, of heart disease, of many forms of cancer, of hypertension. And if they're the cause, they can also be the solution. We look at it for a couple of years and see patients that I knew should be dead by my conventional training, alive and well, tumors melting away or totally gone. The doctor called me at home and he says, hey, I just got your blood work back from the lab and I was reviewing your results and you're no longer diabetic. Robbie, my partner in crime at Plant Based News, has done a extensive interview with the creators of Eating You Alive, which I'll link down below. But the documentary basically shows some deeply personal stories about how people regain their health on a plant-based diet. It cleverly peppers these stories with hard facts about the plant-based lifestyle from a medical perspective. It's really well produced and it's actually quite convincing. The vegetables and the fruits and the whole grains and the beans, those foods have power that you never imagined it's time to put it to work. It also features James and Susie Cameron, Hollywood superstars who then went on to help produce The Game Changers, which is later on in this video. This could be the first generation of children in the United States that lives less than its parents. I got two pills I take for my diabetes, then I got one for cholesterol, high blood pressure, and then I take Bieta, which is an injectable. I'm getting really shaky, and I'm sick, and I'm fatigued, and that's when they diagnosed me with hypertension and diabetes. Obesity, diabetes, heart disease, high blood pressure costs this country more than $120 billion each year. People are saying, you're crazy. You're a cancer patient. You should be resting. Doctors told me this. When I had the second heart attack, the doctor said, I should prepare for death. Heart disease is an absolutely toothless paper tiger that need never, ever exist. 
people who were raised in Japan, the Philippines, Korea, China, never had heart disease, prostate cancer, colon cancer, breast cancer, rheumatoid arthritis, multiple sclerosis. This is the atlas of cancer mortality in China. Virtually the Western diet was non-existent. They had no animal products, they had no dairy, no meat. We learned that we could turn on and turn off cancer growth just by adjusting the level of intake of that protein. I knew at that point what caused most diseases. Our national authorities are simply excluding this concept in order to protect the status quo. With the Western diet, there are going to be half a million people in this country this year who will have to have the front half of their body divided, their heart exposed. Some people would call that extreme. I know of nothing else in medicine that can come close to what a plant-based diet can do. If you go through life thinking that what happens to you from a health perspective is based on your genes, you're a helpless victim. I've reversed the diabetes. The diabetes is not coming back. I just can't understand what it's done to change my life. Diet is so much more important than anybody ever thought. To me, the answer is so simple, it's criminal. And it's just people starting to take responsibility for their health and starting to eat more plant-based foods. It's that simple. That was an amazing trailer, and this is one of the original plant-based documentaries that was a huge success. It came out in 2011, and a fun fact is it inspired a couple of celebrities to try out the plant-based lifestyle, including Kristen Bell and Ozzy Osbourne, although I don't think his vegan phase lasted that long. Back to eating meat now, right? Oh, so this, oh, was a very, this was a very temporary flirtation. Oh, no, I mean, I thought, well, I might as well join the clan. I mean, oh, screw this. <laughs> Get me a bacon sandwich. As epic as Forks Over Knives was as the OG plant-based health documentary, this was superseded by What the Health, which was produced by the makers of Cowspiracy, Kip Anderson and Keegan Coon, executively produced by Joaquin Phoenix. It came onto Netflix in 2017. The diabetes, the arthritis, the heart disease, the dementia, the obesity, the cancers are affecting about 70% of deaths. We have an epidemic cascade of debilitating disease that's overcoming the country. 18% of children are morbidly obese right now. We're on par to have one in three people be diabetic in the next 25 years. That's crazy statistics. We have this very dangerous situation. Large amounts of these substances have unquestionably been associated with clogged arteries, high blood pressure, diabetes, autoimmune diseases. Absolutely, the science is solid. We're talking life and death. Health organizations have become co-opted. They are taking money from the very industries who are causing the problems. There's a very strong pharmaceutical industry and lobby that has a, a huge stake in preserving the status quo. We've got a $35 billion statin drug industry. Do they ever want to see that go away? The government's in bed with anyone that gives them the most money. These are government programs. Consumers have no idea. We consider it normal that a town the size of the town I grew up in gets wiped out every year. If that many people were being killed by some terrorist group in the United States every year, we would find them. From a community standpoint, from all other aspects, we're in a state of emergency. They care more about cooperation than these people. They spend at least $138 million lobbying Congress. These companies really have a vested interest in making sure that the public doesn't have information about their effects. Any little thing that comes up, man, they beat it to death. They're trying to silence people into not speaking out and not showing the truth. If that's where you want to go with this, I'm sorry, I'm not the person that you should be talking to. The European, European We're Association of Style. What the Health made loads of people try out the vegan lifestyle, including F1 champion Lewis Hamilton, fashion designer Tom Ford, or NBA star Kyrie Irving. And if you haven't seen our interview at Plant Based News with Kip Anderson, I'll link it down below. We'll play the trailer in a minute, but The Game Changers was definitely the hottest plant-based documentary so far. I mean, just look at the executive producers, Jackie Chan, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Novak Djokovic, Lewis Hamilton, James and Susie Cameron. It was originally started by two exceptionally kind human beings, and the documentary basically talks about the protein myth and the rise of plant-based diets in athletic circles. One and only, Arnold Schwarzenegger. I ate a lot of meat. They showed us commercials. Steak. 
That's what a man eats. Selling that idea that real man eat meat. Serious man food. But you got to understand, that's marketing. That's not based on reality. I've been teaching fighting techniques to government agencies for more than 15 years. Then, I got injured. Unable to teach for at least six months, I spent more than a thousand hours studying science on recovery and nutrition, and stumbled across a study about the Roman gladiators. The gladiators were predominantly vegetarian. How could the original professional fighters be so powerful, eating only plants? When I made the switch to a plant-based diet, I qualified for my third Olympic team. I broke two American records. I was like, man, I should have done this a long while ago. When I went plant-based, I wasn't sure if I was going to survive. And I actually became like a machine. One of the biggest misconceptions in sports nutrition is that we have to have animal protein to perform at a high level. That's just not true. Sometimes you have to do things that you know your competitors aren't doing. Today's blood and yesterday's blood. Yeah. I think this is going to wake a lot of people up. I was recovering better, not getting as sore. This was our best season in the last 15 years, and we had 14 guys on plant-based diets. We all want to feel great, have more energy. Cholesterol was 276. Today, 169. Whoa, now you're talking. <laughs> Most guys my age can't keep up with the grandchildren. My grandchildren can't keep up with me. It's not one set of dietary guidelines for improving your performance as an athlete. Another one for reversing heart disease, reversing diabetes. It's the same for all of them. Someone asked me, how could you get as strong as an ox without eating any meat? And my answer was, have you ever seen an ox eating meat? Check out our interview at Plant Based News with James Wilkes, whose story is followed in the film. And in the interview, we talk about the controversial reception of the film, including Joe Rogan's reaction and much, much more. James Wilkes then appeared on the Joe Rogan podcast a couple of weeks later to absolutely school anti-vegan Chris Cresser. Do you know how do you read a forest plot? <laughs> yes or no? I don't. Block. Forest plot? You don't know how to read a forest plot? Yeah. I don't know the details. It's almost like comedy. Anyway, the film is on all of the main streaming networks around the world, and I definitely recommend it. And before I go, I wanted to give a shout out to a few plant-based documentaries that are in the works that are gonna be epic. First and foremost, Seaspiracy, which is produced by my friends Ali and Lucy, as well as Kip Anderson, and it's gonna be blockbuster. Secondly, Eating Our Way to Extinction, which is backed by Richard Branson, uh, endorsed by Leonardo DiCaprio, narrated by Kate Winslet, the release date has been pushed back due to COVID-19, but check out an early fundraising trailer from a couple of years ago. We are, all of you know it, on the edge of a climatic abyss. Locations around the globe saw extreme heat, including one record in Kuwait of 129. <laughs> The primary driving force behind species extinction, behind water and air pollution, is this system of animal agriculture. Animal agriculture. Animal agriculture. Animal agriculture. Animal agriculture. Studies show climate change and water shortages are directly linked to the amount of meat we consume. We will not succeed until we stop animal agriculture.
prostate cancer, colon cancer, breast cancer, rheumatoid arthritis, multiple sclerosis. I knew at that point what caused most diseases. Animal products. Animal-based proteins. Animal protein. People that increase their consumption of plant-based foods, decrease their consumption of animal foods, actually have a, a survival advantage, actually live years longer than those that don't. In the European Union alone, over half of its budget is used to subsidize livestock production. Across Europe, 80% of direct payments go to just 20% of farmers. When you really look at who's lobbying for this system of agriculture, it's the largest meat producers. They dictate the federal policies around producing food because they have so much power. Government gives $30 billion to underwrite cheap meat, they and they give no money to the vegetable industry. industry. Recent scientific research has discovered that farm animals are far from stupid. The nearest most of us come is in the supermarket. But do we know how intelligent and sensitive they are? And how the decisions we make every day directly affect their lives? Tens of millions of Americans have switched their diet from meat-centered meals to ones rich in vegetables, grains, beans, and other plant-based foods. Not only is it a healthy lifestyle change, but it's also helping change our environmental footprint. The number one thing that you can do is to just stop eating meat. Last but not least is they're trying to kill us, which is produced by King Kuhn the co-producer of What the Health and Cowspiracy, who in this documentary teams up with badass vegan John Lewis to expose the systemic racism in healthcare. So this is the neighborhood I grew up in, right in Ferguson. A friend of mine was actually shot in his driveway, right there. You put drugs in the communities, put guns in the communities, you put disease in the communities, put poor food in the communities. All these things are designed to shorten your life expectancy. It's by design. It is not accidental that this is what's in the hood and this is what's over there. There's actually an active hand in making sure that we are living like this. It's all about control, money, and survival to them. Your death is not an expense to them. It's an expense to you. They're trying to make money from us, even if it's at the expense of killing us. You just die slow. Your family just watches you die. The alcohol industry fast food industries, tobacco industries, target communities of color. Your health is not their main priority. They're trying to keep you sick. We are in a state of emergency when it comes to our health. Keeping people sick is very lucrative. Now you want pills. Now you want dialysis. Now you want medicine. You go into the hospital on a regular to see your doctor. Everybody's getting paid, except you. Big pharma and pharmaceutical companies are making billions of dollars off of all of us. As long as they can make that dollar, they don't care if you live or die. It's something about being here that's making black people sick. Everybody's getting paid, except you. You hurt me. There are more dangerous and harmful chemicals and products made for women of color. It absolutely is a crisis. They don't make a dime if you're healthy. It's kind of like the dope gang. It is the dope gang. It's just a bigger gangster, the mob boss. You look at the hidden hand, you see that government is feeding the crisis. We're fed wrong knowledge, sorry, all the wrong food. It's about money over people's health. If you can control a population's access to food, you can control the person. Only about 8% of African Americans even live in communities that have a grocery store in them. Because the deep root problem is the food. Because poor diets kill more brothers than pistols. You know, we fighting for our lives. That's like Michael Vick's pit bulls. As black men. We're dying off so quickly in so many ways. It's here, pocketed in our communities. We don't want a healthy population. That is injustice, plain and simple. The powers that be that are making that money at the top, they trying to kill us. Lastly, I want to give a shout out to PBN's very own end of year documentary. It's a bit of a selfless plug. It's not on any major streaming networks, but it does get often millions of views on YouTube. And I want to know whether I should do vegan 2020 this year. Let me know down below whether you think I should do it. And let me know down below what your favorite plant-based documentary is. I might do another video on, uh, on vegan documentaries like Earthlings and Dominion, but, uh, but yeah, hope you enjoyed. Please subscribe for more. I'll see you very soon.